Okay. Hey everyone, Lawrence Mack, Remax Realtron here with a bunch of cool guys. We're just here to uh, talk about things. So I'm Lawrence Mack. I work out of Lauren Park, Mississauga. Uh, next, John, why don't you go? I'm just going to... Um, I'm uh, John Mercury. I work uh, out of Barrie with uh, EXP Realty. Right. I'm a broker. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know what else you want me to say about that, but that's where I'm from. Dave? I'm Dave McMurray. I'm up in uh, beautiful Bracebridge, Muskoka. Um, and I'm with Keller Williams. I'm the only KW guy. Well, I used to be the only KW guy north of Aurelia. Um, and uh, that's how I started in the business. Nice. Mohammed? Uh, Mohammed Ashik with Iper Realty. Uh, I work out of Brampton. Uh, that's where Iper Realty had offices. We work usually in central and west Brampton area. Um, I'm working with my dad and my partner for the last five, six years now. Stuart? I'm Stuart Sinclair from Remax West in Caledon. Um, mostly work in Caledon. It's a big area, but sometimes a little north. Go to Orangeville once in a while. Uh, Tottenham, Alston. Great. And Fred? Uh, Fred DeCarlos. Uh, Fred helps team in Milton. Uh, most of our work is in Milton, but spill over a little bit into uh, Oakville, Burnton, uh, Mississauga. Oh, great. Okay, so I just start off. Um, just curious how everything is going uh, in the past <laughs> few weeks. It's been kind of crazy. Uh, myself, um, I had three listings on the go, and then now I have zero. <laughs> had a few buyers on the go, and then zero. So, really, for the past uh, few weeks, I've been working mostly on systems, uh, a lot of family stuff, and obviously that gets in the way too. I uh, just want to know how everybody was working in the last few weeks. Just free for all, chime in whenever you like. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just kind of the same boat. Um, some, some listings coming up and then everything that's just happened. Sellers are scared. They don't want to show their homes. Buyers are kind of backing out because they think that, you know, the market's going to crash and they'll get a better deal in a couple months. And plus, they don't want to go out seeing homes with everything that's going on. So that's literally what I've been doing last couple of weeks. So just kind of working on my systems and just kind of getting a plan ready that, you know, once we're back in business, how we're going to hit the, the market. If I can uh, share that my, my perspective and approach has changed um, to how I operate business and there's a silver lining in all this. Um, I haven't done much since the middle of March as far as uh, new listings coming on. I've actually suspended a few listings and um, been, been pushing things, you know, for those that are not urgent. But now I've got a backlog and I've, I've reached a point where um, the ones that have to transact, like I've got a client right now who's, who closed um, middle of March, but it, it was an inheritance. So he wanted to make sure that he had the money to be able to move forward and, and had got you know, a little bit of wind of what was coming down um, as far as uh, this whole set of circumstances. So he ended up taking refuge in an Airbnb for a few weeks. And now he's ready to move forward. So this is a guy who has to transact, right? So next week, um, after the Easter weekend, I'll be helping him do that. I've got um, someone who uh, has to sell. And next week, you know, I'll be dealing with that. So it's more of the has to's and not the want to's that I'm, I'm dealing with right now, or I will be dealing with. But I've, it's, um, I, could, I could live with that going forward, you know? <laughs> and I think that... Uh, uh, you know, that is a silver lining in what's happening right now. So, yeah, I got to agree with that. It's, uh, it's nice and refreshing to only work on the stuff that is a hundred percent urgent, uh, in the client's minds. Uh, same thing as Lawrence, we had three listings, uh, just going into this, uh, one of them had to sell, we sold that one. Uh, and the others are, uh, same as John, they're on hold right now. Uh, and it actually feels great. Uh, able to catch up on other things, able to you know spend some family time extra without feeling guilty about it at all. Uh, and I don't have that, uh, you know, I want to take over the world mentality. So we're just working on what is most important right now. And uh, I'm not even putting that much effort into my systems like uh, Muhammad's doing. Uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, taking a break, a forced break, uh, which is which is a little nice. <laughs> Stuart, anything yeah. Uh, we've got three listings on the go. They're all able to be shown. Um, they have, uh, well, sorry, one's a business and two residential. Um, the two residential, the uh, one, they have a cottage to go to. 
So they, you know, they want to capitalize on if the people that have to buy are out there. Um, I have four listings in the hopper that were supposed to come out um, just after March break. And that crashed and burned pretty quick. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm enjoying the uh, family time. Um, trying to figure out how we're going to run the business moving forward. Uh, we're going to, you know, put in uh, different products like Matterport. You know, we did a lot of video for our listings, but we're going to introduce Matterport again. Um, you know, we want, it's going to be a new world. So I'm just trying to figure out how we're going to fit in that new world and what products and, and, you know, systems we can have in place. For, yeah. I mean, in general, it's time it's, to do um, it again. Yeah. Well, in general, I, I did my first, uh, like buyer presentation kind of over zoom. I thought it was kind of cool. <laughs> you know, it's like, I didn't have to go anywhere. Right. I'm just at home going through some graphs and stuff and, you know, different MLS stuff. So that was good. Have you thought about how much more efficient, you know, we could be if we can not have to travel to people's places to yeah, do these appointments, sure. right? And and I think, you know, there's back to my point, there there's a silver lining in all of this. And there's mm -hmm. opportunity that's just, you know, it's just speaking to us right now that we need to, you know, be aware of, right? I, I think the best word that I've heard from you know, all the people that are forward thinking that uh, you know, think outside the box is you have, you have on one hand, you have these people that are like, oh yeah, you know, I can't do anything. I can't, I'm just sitting around and I'm drinking and I'm eating and I'm, you know, fighting with the family. Um, but you have these, everybody that I've talked to that I kind of respect and, and hold in a high spot, they're, they, they're using the word opportunity. And that is, I think the, it's going to be the word of 2020, right? Um, people are looking for the opportunity in this, whether it's an affiliate marketing business, whether it's you know, different products like Zoom or Matterport or whatever, that's going to help not just our business, but people in general, um, you know, the way that they work. Everybody thinks, you know, retail is going to be out, you know, restaurants are going to be different. You think of like even gyms, gyms and, and, and concerts, these are all things that people are going to, you know, look at differently. And we as, as entrepreneurs or as forward thinking people have to see the opportunity in all this. And I think I, I just, I love that word right now. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And I think that's what, like right now, what we need to be thinking about how we're going to, you know, think, go about doing our business going forward, because just the dynamics of a lot of businesses, like you mentioned, Stuart, uh, including real estate, is just going to change, uh, you know, in a month or two, once everything is yeah. kind of, you know, back to normal. So, you know, opportunities, I think is the right word. And just kind of using some of this time, you know, besides drinking and <laughs> and all that <laughs> to really, you know, think about how we're going to, you know, utilize different systems. And like you mentioned, Zoom and incorporate all these different things into our business now moving forward. Because it's, it's not going to be the same. It's interesting up here in, uh, in Muskoka because um, there's two, two distinct markets. There's the residential and the recreational, which is the cottage market. And uh, it was interesting, Stuart mentioning his client who's got a cottage to go to, and I'm fighting those people off. They want to, they've got cabin fever. They, they want to leave the GTA and go for a drive, look at properties, you know, get their mind off of the current crisis. And I'm telling them, you know, is this an emergency? Like, is, is this essential? And we know it's certainly not. Nobody needs a cottage. It's like buying a motorcycle. Nobody needs it, but they really want one. And they're going to get one at some point, but there's, not usually a, a real hurry. Um, so that part of the business is I'm telling people, you know, please, if you can just give it a month. We're normally in the, in a dead zone right now, weather wise, where I am last year at this time, everything was flooding. Um, the Muskoka river, Lake Muskoka, the connected chain of lakes. There was a lot of extra water. It was on the news. Uh, we had a major delay in, in uh, April and early May uh, here. So when I look at my calendar last year, there's kind of a block where the listings weren't there. And then in early May, it just boom, I had seven within a couple of weeks. Um, so this isn't that different than last year, except the, the unknown is really the big problem. It's kind of fear in people's mind. Um, and when we're talking about not just surviving, but thriving when we go through a market shift, uh, that's, that's where agents like us that, that, that have a decent track record and people know 
uh, are going to come out um, at the other end doing a lot better than, than a lot of other agents that, that aren't doing anything during this time or have lost, I hate to say it, they've lost their confidence and they're, they're, they're very fearful. Um, and that that's contagious when you're used to having conversations and telling people how you know it's going to go. Um, and I'm not telling people I know how it's going to go, but when they have specific questions, if you have an answer, give them an answer. If you don't, it's okay to say you're not sure and you don't have a crystal ball. And I do corny things like rubbing my head and tell them I, <laughs> I don't have a crystal ball, you know. Um, but the, the cottage market is an interesting, it's an interesting creature up here. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty with the mid-range cottages. There's people who can hardly afford them and they're renting them out half the season just to pay their bills. Some of those people are going to have to sell them. So I think this upcoming fall, there's going to be a lot of opportunity in that, in the low to mid cottage range. Um, the ultra luxury people can, they're, they're fine. Um, residential six, I think six to six to 12 months out, there's going to be a lot of people selling as well. And uh, it's been such a, such a uh, seller's market up here, like in most areas. Um, I have, hey, Dave, sorry to cut you off. I have a bunch of people that are sitting thinking that same thing, that there's going to be a lot of opportunity for their, you know, for their first cottages because of these people yeah. that have jumped into the market and everything was, was going smoothly. And, you know, they, Hey, let's get a cottage, honey. And, you know, yeah. they rent it out four or five months of the year and, yeah, we're sitting waiting, and that's that is normally fall is normally the right time to get a deal on a cottage. But for the last few years, there have not been very many good deals. It's been a lot of opportunistic sellers who are just looking to go as high as they can. But I think there's going to be more need to sell people this fall. And I think it it also has to do with uh, the Airbnb business that's kind of uh, coming crashing down because of the uh, the coronavirus. Because a lot of, you know, compared to the hotel industry, a lot of people are going to be scared, you know, staying in the same homes that are being shared with other people. Mm -hmm. so, and, and we're already kind of seeing the effects of that. You know, there's not much, uh, a lot of vacancies and a lot of Airbnbs, even in Toronto, you see a lot of condos hitting uh, the market. So all of these investors that I know a couple agents from uh, Remax office, they had uh, almost mentioned one client, he had six condos in downtown. Now he's forced to sell like four of them because he can't afford them, right? So sure. no one's booking them. All right, so let's try a different format. So I'm gonna try switching to speaker view. Does that work, speaker view? People see me or? Uh, anyway. Yeah, I can see you. I get, give me speaker view. Anyway, um, so one of the issues that I have in general are car reluctance to call my sphere. <laughs> uh, just wondering what everyone's, uh, opinion is on that and what you've been saying or how the reception has been. Uh, Sorry, you have a reluctance to do that? Yeah, I don't really like calling here. I'd rather call cold people, but even then I'd, I'd rather, I, in general, I like doing more poll marketing and that kind of stuff, I guess, what, how I do most I, of So the sphere is what majority of my business runs on. And I spent, I, actually, I think it was yesterday, I spent about two hours texting, emailing, and I didn't call any of them. Um, okay. major and but majority of my business, my clients know that like my phone's always on silent. I never pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. If you need to get a hold of me, um, you know, text me. But like all I said was, "Hey guys, just checking in. How are you holding up?" And so many people respond. Hey, th and these are people that I haven't even contacted, you know, through text in like two years. You know, the, and they were all like, "Hey, thanks for checking in." And it was like you know, hey, just checking in, how are you guys holding up, you know, and then you start the conversation. And I said, you know, that whatever the conversation, however it went, and at the end, let me know if you ever if you guys need anything. This is a tough time or something like that. And it got such great response. That, that gives me the confidence, you know. And it's so easy to do. I, I think that's the key. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I sorry, I sat and and watched a YouTube tutorial and spent two hours doing that. Like it was such a great use of my time. That's awesome. I like that idea. I was gonna say, I think that's the key right now is to be present um, for the clients, uh, having nothing to do with real estate. And I don't know if that's how some of you normally work and then real estate just comes up, but um, just have absolutely no um, 
conversations on real estate. Yeah, just checking in, seeing how people are doing, uh, and then just let the conversation go where it's gonna go. And you're not gonna convince anyone to sell or buy uh, in this time, and if you are, I don't know if we should be talking right now. Uh, but if you just have conversations with people, it's just another checkpoint. that They're gonna know that you're there when they need you. I find that the conversation just naturally goes to real estate, and you don't yeah. even have to bring it up. So, you know, I'll do a check-in and uh, same thing, you know, ask how they're doing. And, and depending on who it is, you know, if they're a leader type, so if they're a, a business owner or if they're, you know, somebody who I feel is really in tune with what's going on in the world, I'll ask them, right? Like, what, what do you think? What do you think's going on? Like, what do you think is happening? And their input, they want to be heard, right? Um, and then by the time we're done, seven out of 10 times, we're going to be talking about real estate, but I'll never bring it up once. And then, you know, I'll, I'll even um, finish that part of the conversation with, listen, like, you know, the game has changed. The rules have changed. How we're going about it has changed. We do have, um, you know, we are following different um, kind of protocols now to be able to do things safely. I, I, you know, I don't think that it's the case for you. But if there is somebody that you know that needs help, like these are who we're talking to right now. And, and they appreciate that, right? So, um, but it, it, I definitely don't lead with a real estate conversation, right, Lauren? So it's, it's really easy. And people um, are available more than ever now to talk to. So it's, you know, it, it's just, uh, it's the easiest time to connect with people, right? Awesome. No, they give me a lot of confidence. We appreciate that. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. I think is you don't start with real estate because, because I think what you're thinking in your mind is that, you know, if I call someone up, let's say someone that I spoke to a yeah. year ago, first thing that they're going to think, oh, this guy again with his real yeah. estate. No, <laughs> yeah. right? if you just have a casual conversation, it's naturally going to like, you know, everyone said it's going to lead to real estate because they know you work in real estate. Mm -hmm. so if you just have a casual conversation. It'll naturally just lead to real estate. And at that point, you know, you're in touch with them. And at the end of the day, you know, the key word is just be top of mind. As long as you're top of mind, then, you know, they know that, you know, you work in real estate, the conversation will just naturally just lead there. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I mean, most of the stuff I normally do is just all Facebook related and more marketing and pull and you know, website yeah, yeah. videos kind of stuff, but not like a direct Stuart, one. Stuart mentioned uh, the word opportunity. And I think, you know, it, there is a great opportunity here for those that want to want to take it. I find that lately there's just been so much shit being spewed out you know over facebook and and shared and repeated and regurgitated and you know anybody that you talk to that has a question is confused right and um and you know it and and there there is an agent population that is doing that and making matters worse than yeah. it really is you know um so i think there's a ripe time like right now to be the voice of reason, right? And go into the weeds with the talking point headlines and, you know, um, say the things that, you know, people need to hear and not want to hear kind of thing, right? So um, there's, there's an opportunity right there, you know, to, well, um, to, to have that conversation that needs to be had. Okay, well, um, that basically answers my questions. Just go do it and talk to people and connect more. So I think uh, I do appreciate you guys. Uh, that I think it really helped. Um, next, uh, I guess, John, do you want to bring up uh, any particular question issue you have uh, for the group? Not so much of a question, um, just more of an observation. And I found myself, um, I'll share with you guys how um, my thought process has changed. And when this first started, I thought, okay, um, this is crazy. This is going to be, you know, a big problem. And I, and I was focused on uh, the problem, right? I spent a lot of time focusing on the problem and not so much um, solutions to the problems and opportunities that exist because of the problem and how we could move forward. Right. So it was just a mind, um, a mind shift as to, you know, what I would allow to occupy my time. Uh, and my mind, and I find that my mood has improved because of that. And uh, um, I'm just, uh, I guess I'm, I'm curious to know, um, like how has your thinking changed, right? Uh, from when this all started to, to now, have, have you guys 
you know, have you left the fear and the fear stage and moved into acceptance and now looking at solutions or, you know, are you guys uh, still kind of fearful, you know, about the unknown? I don't know. Oh, for, for myself in general, I'm always very positive. So I'm, I'm never, not like afraid of anything, <laughs> but uh, just in terms of trends is sort of what, where I've sort of retooled some of the things I'm working on. Like I'm, I, I'm really concentrating more on the buyer. I do feel that, especially with the commercial end, uh, for the first time, like I've been trying to work on this project for like the last six months. And now, you know, this week I've basically started pushing out all these letters to a bunch of uh, commercial people and uh, reach out to them because I feel that that's, a, that's going to be a trend because with like the small businesses it's going to go out of businesses and then so it's just going to be a cascade effect. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there for, on the buy side and the commercial side. And so I'm just kind of thinking that way and also I guess reaching out to more agents just because I don't know, I'm at home. So that's, uh, that's where my mindset's at. <laughs> no, yeah. definitely, I agree with that. Um, so I think it's like with what John said, you know, there was that initial stage of fear and, you know, just kind of, uh, I guess it's more fear of the unknown, you know, where is this going to lead us into in terms of, you know, our business and not just our business with everything that's going on. Right. Because we work with people that own businesses, you know, people that have been laid off. So, you know, all those things are going to affect our business as a whole. So, you know, again, you know, with uh, Lawrence, you have to have a positive mindset, right? You can't just be all, you know, doom and gloom. There's just too much out there, especially with the media. So you really have to stay positive and just kind of keep focus on your business that, you know, as soon as everything's kind of back to normal and just have everything kind of planned out. And I think that's the best way to do it. Just have a plan. And like, the, like they said, with the word opportunity, you have to see how you're going to do your business differently and just have a plan. I think for me, the, uh, the whole fear thing never really um, entered my business. Uh, I guess, you know, we're lucky, we're comfortable. I'm fine if business takes a little bit of a hit this year as a result. Uh, I think on the fear aspect, I think you want to know what your client's fears are. The ones you already have more of a connection with, you're not going to go out to you know, someone you haven't talked to in, in a few years and just say, Hey, what are you scared about today? But it, it's a, that, add that to the topic of the conversations. They have issues um, and they just want to talk. Um, and the thing is their businesses, their, their small businesses will be affected. Their jobs are being affected. Uh, and, you know, you really got to get inside what drives them, what motivates them and how they're doing right now. And I'm going to keep going back to that probably as we talk today. Um, you know, our business is going to go up and down and, and that's fine. Uh, but they have some real problems uh, that are out there right now, for sure. Yeah, I don't mind admitting that uh, I've had some moments of uh, anxiousness and fearfulness in the last couple of weeks, uh, and I'm really not that guy, if, if, you, if you knew me well. Um, and my wife's pointed out, she's like, you've been pretty calm and cool about this, but what are you thinking about? Because she can, she can tell I'm kind of looking off in the distance or I'm not connecting um, or whatever. And I would say, you know, it's some of it is about momentum, you know, in real estate, when you get going, it builds and it snowballs and your business. Um, sometimes it, as far as lead generation goes, I'm a sphere guy. I don't do a lot of cold calling. I don't do a lot of, um, I don't do any door knocking. Um, who, who would open the door for me? <laughs> you know, um, but, uh, but the momentum certainly there and I'm not, I'm really, if I think about it and listening to my brain, um, I'm not concerned. But I had a couple moments where I'm like, I don't like the unknown either. You know, I'm not a control freak, but it's good to have a pretty good idea of, of where things are going, knowing where you're next, how many listings are coming from. Um, and uh, so, John, I mean, to your question, it, it is a mindset thing for me as well. It's, it's and I'm trying to do a couple hours working on my database, working on um, things that I just wouldn't get done otherwise if I was really moving uh, and, and the industry was, and the market had really picked up. So I'm, I'm trying to do things so that I can look back uh, in a few months and not regret how I spent my time. Uh, Cause I'm still spending lots of time with my family um, and keeping in contact with friends and 
and uh, doing stuff on the, the, our leadership council with my brokerage. But I want to make sure that I'm doing some things that only I can do and work at, work at those things for a couple hours in the morning um, for sure. So that e even if I decide I'm going to, you know, play Call of Duty with my son, uh, at least I've done some other stuff, right? Oh, in general, yeah. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say that, you know, as long as you're being productive, I think that that's, you know, the, the big thing. I, me personally, I'm not afraid. Um, I'm adaptive, I guess, if that's a word. Um, I try to just, people are going to still buy, they're going to sell, they're, you know, they have to upsize, they have to downsize, people are going to split. Um, you know, just keep doing like what we're doing today, keep in contact with other agents, keep in contact with your sphere. Um, you know, this is all going to blow over eventually. And if it doesn't, then we're all in the same boat, right? So um, I think that once we have more of a, of a the new normal, um, as long as we adapt to what that new normal is, then we'll be fine. Like in 2008, the markets crashed. We got through it. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't the end of the world and everybody was, was, you know, kind of freaking out. I spoke to a, to a client who's a good buddy of mine and he says, I'm worrying about the things I can change. I'm not worrying about the stuff I can't. So that's pretty good way to, to look at things. Yeah. So I'll, I'll share with you guys. I had a conversation with a mentor of mine and um, one of the takeaways that I got from it was uh, focus on what you know, to your point, and, and, and that's what's in front of us. Um, you still have to have a little bit of planning and focus for what's ahead. But it's hard to do that when that train just keeps moving down the track, right? Like you, there's no end in sight to it. But, you know, um, what we know and what we can adapt to is, is exactly that, right? Like what we know, what's in front of us, what are we dealing with, what are our circumstances today? And I think my focus in the past or in the last couple of weeks was focusing on the future. And, and you know, I've had to change focus. Um, so consciously now I'm maybe spending 20% of my time thinking about what that plan is going to look like. What we came into 2020 with, you know, is thrown out the window at this point, everything's changed. Nothing makes sense anymore. It's just not business as usual. So what's our new norm, right? And that's, what's helped me. Um, and that's what I want to share with you guys is that, uh, that that's helped me. And it sounds like you guys got it figured out, but I, I did go into the rabbit hole and I'm not ashamed to, to say that. Right. So, well, for me, I mean, if you follow me on my Facebook and that kind of stuff, I really try not to tolerate any negativity. All the stuff I post are all positive. They're fun, lighthearted, and... Love your memes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, that's really the goal. I just, you know, for fun. I, and the other reason for that is because I, I don't want people to unsubscribe from me, either my email or my Facebook, right? So, I mean, the general idea is just be fun and be like, oh, I wonder what he's posting. Right? That, so, that, that's the general mindset I have for my, my social media plan. Um, but uh, in terms of the positivity of everything, the way I see it is if, if the world just goes to crap, we're screwed anyway. It doesn't matter, right? So the main point is if it doesn't go to crap, uh, the idea is more about the relative success, I guess you have, right? If a whole bunch of realtors, for example, just get out of the business, all of a sudden there's more business for us. The other way I see it from a relative point of view, from a global point of view is like, what country do you want to run away to exactly? I mean, before, my opinion, top three, maybe Australia, Canada, U.S. Like, you really want to go to the U.S.? Like, there's a lot of countries people want to get away from. I mean, they're going to get to Canada. And in Canada, Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal. I mean, from a global point of view, I don't see why that particular train is going to stop. Like, everyone's just going to come to Toronto. So that's, that's why I always have a very positive mindset, because I know there's just going to be uh, it's a very solid market here. Can can I ask you a question actually on that? Um, and Dave, you're up in Bracebridge, so you'll probably have something to say about this. So in Caledon, I sell a lot of estates, uh, you know, horse farms, country property and stuff. And I'm wondering if now with all this social distancing going on, are people going to look at these properties and go, wait a second here? You know, I was I was stuck down in Toronto in a condo for you know, two months. And, you know, I don't want to ever do that again. And I'm starting to think, you know, is this, so I, I'm going to send in a video to, to my database and, and just ask their opinion, but like, are people going to look at these country estate properties and say, you know, 
I would rather be social distancing myself. Like I have a listing right now up in Calden. It's four acres, pool, pond, you know, big house for a million four. And if you look at somebody that's stuck down in Toronto on a tiny little home, that's probably, you know, 2.4. Are they going to look at these properties and go, you know, if this ever happens again, I want to have a pool, a pond, four acres. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, that's just, just my thoughts. Yeah, a hundred, hundred percent. So um, the classic, GTA buyer that I work with, they want five or more acres. They want an expansive house. They want a detached garage and they want privacy, privacy and privacy uh, from GTA. I grew up in Toronto. I know they don't really have a high standard on privacy or quiet. They're okay if they hear a little highway noise. uh, If they see a neighbor once in a while, where a local person who wants privacy, I mean, they're an hour from town somewhere, you know, off grid and with the shotgun loaded, right? Um, so there will be more people. I'm telling, I'm telling my potential sellers uh, that this, the COVID-19 crisis is definitely gonna make people think a lot about, you know, living in the condo or in a tight neighborhood or in a place where the grocery store line is two hours long, you know, whatever the stereotypes are, whatever we're seeing on the news, those things, Um, they're not the same here. Uh, they're still, you can still go out, you can still walk around. You could go to a forested area. You could go for a hike with your dog and still not see anybody. Um, the appeal of escaping the GTA, the same way Lawrence described how Toronto is going to continually to attract people internationally and people wanting to move to Ontario and Toronto specifically. Then there's lots of people who don't want it to get more crowded and they are leaving and they are reaching all, all of our other markets, they're slowly going out. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a solid hour and a half to two hours uh, north of those areas, but those people are working their way here, retiring, wanting the land, wanting uh, just a different a different lifestyle. Um, like, what, like what my wife and I did in 2001, we moved up here, just completely different world, tough to adjust, but once you're, once you're in it, I mean, we could have moved back many times, right? Um, so yeah, that's, that appeal is, growing and I think uh, I tell people who call me in Toronto I have two brothers in Toronto still and um, one of them is in a very tight living situation the other one's in a rental house in Rexdale and I said hey guys if the zombie apocalypse is here where do you want to be where I am or where you are and they just laugh like we're coming your way man we're coming your way (laughs) (laughs) great Um, does anyone else have uh, any other the next issue or I'll just move down the list I guess (laughs) Dave, do you have any uh, particular question that's close to the group? Yeah, I was interested in um, kind of where everyone is kind of personally, financially. I don't want to get, I don't, I'm not talking about numbers, but we kind of came into this and uh, my wife and I are joking because we, we were, went into 2020 saying we are not doing any big projects personally because we've done major renos. We, we were in a house now for about two years. Uh, we done some major renos. One is the basement I described that's been flooded. Um, we've done some other stuff. We've got a, a second house that we put a down payment on. It's not going to close until next year. Um, and we said, we're not doing any big projects here. We need to uh, rein in a little bit of our personal spending. And um, so we've done that and we've done a lot of cutting back before this happened. And we're looking at each other and going, well, I'm pretty glad we didn't you know, lease this or do this or whatever. Um, do any guys, are any guys in a situation, I'm not asking if it's bad or not, I'm just saying, um, are you observing this, that, that a lot of people we're told are living either beyond their means or right at their means, and I don't think that's different in the real estate world, um, but we're, we're pretty happy that we can be okay for, for a period of time and have closings and that type of thing. Um, I'd love to hear your guys, uh, your response on, on those statements. Oh, if I, if I could talk first. Um, the main thing we did a few weeks ago as this thing was happening, uh, first thing I did was evaluate all my finances, make sure I had like a six month runway. So I basically did all my books for 2019 and figure out where everything's going. Looked at all my expenses, cut a bunch of stuff. Um, looking at maybe cutting our second car in terms of just insurance, you know, little things like that because we don't need two cars anymore, right? I mean, we barely use one, right? Like little things like that. Um, I cut, um, yeah, just went through my credit card, just 
make, went through any major stuff. Also, it looks like I, I, in the past I went out a lot to eat. <laughs> I don't do that anymore, so those expenses are down. Um, but generally, for me, it was more like getting that six-month runway just so that I just had an idea, okay, no problem, that part's handled, I don't have to deal with it, so let's move on. So that's, that's how I dealt with that. I think that if you can take that part of uh, the unknown out of the equation, then the rest of it becomes easier to deal with, right? So if, if you're able to get focused on your finances and realize that you know this is or this isn't a problem and how you're going to deal with it first, um, you know that that's what causes a lot of stress, right? Is is the money game, and um, we're fortunate to be in a position where we could ride this out, and and uh, I mean not forever, but we'll be fine. And I'm, I'm an optimist, so I know that, you know, things will get better. But had I, you know, been uh, uh, not in this situation, then, yeah, it'd be definitely something that I'd have to figure out. And maybe it would mean, you know, uh, looking for employment somewhere or um, not being able to focus on how I want to grow the business going forward or what my business is going to look like on the other side of this, right? So, um, so to your point... You know, that's, that's something that we looked at for sure. And once we realized that, you know, we're going to be okay for a little while, then we can focus on something else. So. I think for a lot of people, um, they just have to stop and take a look at their monthly finances, see what expenses have already dropped uh, naturally just based on this. Uh, my uh, wife has a $750 a month 407 bill that we're not paying for right now. Um, so there are some positives to this, but a lot of us have, you know, recurring memberships uh, or, or subscriptions, you know, stop, take an hour, look at your credit card bill and see what's actually going out. And you can easily shave off stuff that is just not making sense right now. By the same token, I have subscribed to a couple other things. For example, I paid for the upgraded Zoom <laughs> and probably a couple other uh, more remote kind of stuff like quick pages and maybe some other stuff is what I'm looking at. And maybe reduce some of the other expense from like, you know, the bomb bomb co video kind of thing that I'm paying for now. And just trying to reorganizing some of the services I have that maybe consolidate them so that I don't have as many different things. I think the cutting back on the little things that, uh, that, uh, add up like I did the same you know with something like audible um, I've, I've stopped all my Facebook ads all my Google uh, Google ads um, you know I'm lucky I've got some closings ahead of me um, you know ask me after they're done I might be working at Tim Hortons but um, I'm I'm kind of lucky we we used to live in this big monster house on 10 acres and you know it was I, I worked just to pay that off and, and we downsized and moved into town. And I like, I've been thanking my lucky stars since then that I wasn't overextended. And I know, you know, we, we, there's a lot of, a lot of realtors out there right now that have overextended themselves because they had a great year, you know, they made big bucks. Hey, let's go upgrade our house. Let's buy a new car. Um, I feel, I feel bad for them, but it, this will be a good, this is going to be a really good learning um, time for people. You know, like I'm looking at my grocery bills differently. My, yeah. you know, my, my phone bills, my, my internet, like, you know, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning to uh, look at my money a little differently. Like it, I can hear my dad in the back of my head, you know, just saying, pay yourself first, pay yourself first. And you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a great learning tool or learning opportunity, I guess, for me. Um, you know, and luckily I'm fine, but there's going to be a ton of agents that aren't. So. And I think no matter what position you're in, you bring up a good point, you know, pick up the phone and, and, and call your cell phone company, call your internet company, call whatever, shave off a little bit off of every bill here and there. Uh, and it's going to help. Great. No, I think, I think that's all really good advice guys. Hopefully it'll help. Uh, Mohammed, what do you got? Um, let's see. One thing I want to discuss with you guys, uh, just kind of being more efficient with um, handling leads. So, you know, with all the lead generation, Google ads, Facebook ads, um, cold calling, door knocking. I do door knock, Dave. <laughs> 
Um, and it's actually pretty good. You know, I've had really good experience with door knocking, you know, especially with like listings and stuff. I'll door knock the street, a uh, couple streets pretty much around the listing and usually get good response. Um, but just kind of be more efficient with uh, handling the leads and lead follow up. Because um, right now in our office, we have like a big whiteboard. So, you know, all the active buyers, the leads, that's where we usually put them on and then kind of transfer them to a CRM system. So we've been using iExact Contact, but just kind of by, you know, I've been also looking into now with this downtime, looking into automation and I've looked into some CRM systems that allow that. I think I, there was one Zoho CRM. If you guys heard of uh, Zoho, it's like a um, CRM and it has like a lot of different apps that you can kind of integrate with each other and kind of automate your workflows your leads and everything. So just kind of want to get a general idea, you know, what your system is when it comes to just being more efficient with your handling the leads and just kind of lead follow up. All right, well, I mean, I'll start. So I do use Exact. I also use Agent Locator. Uh, I have looked at some other CRMs, but uh, I use Exact, although I, I use Exact mostly as my main database and for newsletters. Um, I've got the free website, although I'm probably gonna upgrade that. Uh, Agent Locator, I use mostly for the lead conversion and follow-up because I find they have a better interface for just sorting through things. So that's what I use for that. Uh, and then they both have drip systems. Yeah. So that is on my list of uh, systems to do, which is the automated drip, whether it's a rental drip or a buyer drip or seller drip. But that's been on my like list for like years. So I don't know. I don't know when I'm actually going to do that. But that, do you that think they help like just like the standard template drip campaigns that you get in most of these um, websites like I, I use income for my mm -hmm. main website and it's kind of similar to I used to have agent locator like five years ago and so I'm, I'm kind of familiar with the system and income I think is pretty much the same um, so they have their CRM on the back end so as soon as a lead signs up on your website you know they'll go into the CRM you assign a drip campaign to it um, you think like do you customize your drip campaigns yes. to have like custom so the main reason why I like exact is because it has the automated newsletter that just goes so a yes. few months yeah just gone and because I totally forgot about it so yeah. that's good um, but I do customize it so instead of their generic hey how's it going kind of thing like I, I get rid of it I usually put my stats on there so that it's just quick snapshot of if you see my Facebook post I usually go through uh, Lauren Park in Sasaga, Oakville Toronto condos and that's about it. Oh, and Toronto Detached. Those are like the quick stats I give about the differences between last year and this year so that they can read it in a quick six lines for at least the high D personality. And then I go through some other information and then the exact has the automated uh, articles about, you know, cleaning your gutters or, or whatever the heck they have there, right? Yeah. So, so I send that once a month. So I like that. And I know that it works, at least the drip part, because I have gotten business from it where someone calls me up a year and a half, two years later, and says, hey, I'm ready to sell. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm so happy that you called me. I had no <laughs> idea who the person was, right? But, you know, that, that, so that, that is the advantage of the drip. And I really like the idea of that because the more you can systemize everything, the less work you have to do on, like, a yes. per-time basis. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you else have anything to add to that, or are you going to go to the next one? We use we use Agent Locator. I don't uh, I don't chase new business too often, but we have everything's thrown into our Agent Locator uh, pond or funnel. Um, I don't use their drip campaigns. I do it personally. We'll send out you know I'll shoot a video of myself just saying hey you know you wonder what your home's worth. Here's a link to Street Match or whatever. Um, the uh, it's a good tool to, um, you know, to keep in touch with, uh, with different people. I know like Mike Samra, he, uh, he does it like he's super detailed with each and every client. I'm like Lawrence, I have been talking about setting this stuff up for, for years. Um, the one good thing that, uh, that I just noticed, I think Lawrence, you said something about it is quick pages that Mike Grease is doing. Um, you should look into that because that would be a fantastic thing to implement into what you're doing now with your leads. You know, it's just a quick video that it's kind of like bomb bomb, you know, mm -hmm. quick video that says, Hey, you know, I'm Muhammad. If you need anything, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We're using that now. We've been using it since, uh, December. Uh, and the feedback nice. has been great. The click through rates are super high. 
Um, and yeah, it's always easier to make that first contact, even with a complete stranger, sending them a link by text, even if they're not interested in having a conversation. You see five minutes later, they opened up your link. Uh, and then you can see that they opened up again in 10 minutes and again the next day and then engage in conversation from that. So yeah, that's been a great tool for us. Excellent. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I've been, I don't know why I've been putting this off. I've heard about from a few other agents as well, you know, to incorporate video in your marketing, like especially bomb bomb. But I've heard of quick pages, but I haven't really looked into it, but yeah, definitely something to, you know, really look into. Yeah. I can send you a couple samples uh, after this if you like. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Mohammed, are you doing, are you doing much video at all or nothing? None, man. No, I've been, <laughs> I've been hoping to get into it. Um, you know, I have agents from my office tell me that, you know, you really should get on to uh, bomb bombs and videos to your database. But just haven't really gotten. If you, if you need help, just reach out anytime. I mean, if you see my videos, I mean, it really yeah. just. Yeah, yeah. It, you just have to get out there, and the more you get out there, the more people feel like they're, you know, that they're acquainted with you or whatever. Oh yeah. Well, you're out there now. You're on this video today. Yeah, there you go. It's your first video, right? It's, it's really easy. And, um, but yeah, I have one. Been. Sorry, one of the one of the um, the listings that I got this year was a lady that had been on my website since 2016 and I had sent out all these videos each you know I think I do it every two weeks or whatever and she called me up she asked me for you know come over and and uh, give her an evaluation and I I got to the door and because of video she was like oh my god you're exact same you know in person <laughs> and a young guy like you man you should be you should be doing video like every single freaking day <laughs> and send it out to send it out to everybody your sphere of influence you know your your past clients you could even you could even send stuff out to you know like do facebook ads and and mm -hmm. like i think that if you're if you're doing well now i think video for a young dude like you would would be you'd make you millions i'd come work on your team <laughs> all right yeah, once you have me set up a uh, rural property why not <laughs> oh, video is really good. Like I remember meeting someone at a, a realtor convention, like a like a vendor, and I was going to introduce myself to him. And I'm like, wait, why does he, why would he know who I am? And the answer is, he wouldn't know who I am. It just happens that I watch a lot of his videos. And I just felt very very familiar with the guy, but then I realized, wait, he doesn't even know who I am. So, so I, I mean, I get the same thing with like other realtors. Like I meet them at conventions, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's like I haven't seen you in three years, but like you know, it feels like we've been talking all the time and. Sometimes I don't remember who they are, you know, but it, it, it's really helpful. But again, uh, if you need help, just let me know anytime. Um, like I always tell, tell everyone, like your first few are just going to suck, but yeah, you just keep going, right? Yeah, so you get better at it. Yeah, for sure. For Lawrence, sure. can you make me pretty? Can you make me pretty? Uh, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> the wig on. Uh, uh, filters. There's, there's filters. <laughs> That's, uh, <what> <laughs> That's true. There's a lot of good filters. From a, CR, from a CRM perspective, um, I was using Contactually, and then I got rid of it. I love Contactually, but I'm using the, the Keller Williams, the new platform with KW Command. Uh, there's no charge attached to it, and it's it's very functional now. A year ago, it was not very functional, no matter what anyone in KW says, but um, it's, it's working very well now. We've completely moved over to it. I've got a database around 2,000 contacts in there. I'm... I'm I'm uh, reducing that because uh, they're not all 2,000 great contacts, uh, but the whole platform itself is working fantastic. I can send in my social media ads from there, whether it's paid or not, um, and then all the other CRM stuff and, and a lot of the, a lot of the uh, the apps and software you guys have mentioned do integrate with it. So I've been able to transfer some of those things over as well. So that's that's what I'm using right now. Are you concerned hypothetically if you're no longer at KW? Um, no, because you can you can export everything. So actually, it's it's kind of the opposite. Is that um, at least I know who's got my data. It's not being sold sold other places, which is usually what happens with with all the other software. Good point. Never thought of it that way. Usually, I just think you know, both in terms of the email address given by your brand and your CRM. Like, am I going to be there in twenty years, ten years? Like, I don't know. So that's why it's hard yeah. I I use all my Dave at Dave. Stuff it's it's not I don't I don't use a lot of KW branding but that's that, that's that's not because I'm planning on leaving but it's because it's it's practical right great okay let's move on to uh, Stuart do you have any 
particular question you'd like to? The only thing that I'm, uh, it's not a question. I'm just wondering what everybody, uh, you guys have kind of answered it, but my big thing right now is the content that I am sending out to people, like wondering, you know, um, we did a we did a video out to the database the other day that, and it was just like, hey guys, what's your, you know, this is a tough time, what's your questions? And then we got a couple questions and then I answered those questions and now I'm sitting here going, okay, what's my next content? Like we're sitting here trying to figure out what content we can put out that's not salesy, that's not, um, douchey i guess so i'm just wondering if anybody has any ideas about that so the the content i've been putting out which i should have auto posted right now um regarding just stats mostly so did analysis kind of of the sars effect and also the every last few weeks increment of the march the end of february and the beginning of april just so that people can see the trends so i'm just trying to do more from a data point of view like i struggle with that as well like, I don't know where the line is yet. <laughs> I know, I'm pretty sure I know where the line isn't, you know, further down on the salesy side, but after that, like, it's hard. We're taking this time to uh, prepare the campaigns really for when we get over that hump and there's a little more confidence uh, out there. Uh, and then we'll just hit it a lot harder, uh, get out there, share the information and ask, you know, uh, Stuart, you mentioned, uh, what's your questions now? And then we've got that out of the way too. The next step is going to be a little more detailed is what do you want to do now? Is everything okay? Do you need to make any changes? Um, how do you feel um, that the market changes have impacted you? Is it the other way around? Uh, but it's just that next level of conversation, but everything's just prepared right now. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not okay with sending out the ads to make that next step. Um, and even the directed ads that we have that are going to be sending to the people that already like our page or follow us or, or the, the retarget ads as well. All that is on hold. We're just getting it ready for when there's more confidence out there. Do you, do you know, do you have an idea or do you have a tell that uh, is when, when is that time? So no, when no. should I start? <laughs> no, I know that's, that's one of the big things that I'm struggling with too. It's like, okay, you know, I'm watch, you, you watch the news and you say, there, you see this now, when is going to be that sweet spot where you can, start your machine back up again and not get backlash. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely difficult. And I'm, I do not have a date on it at all. It's going to be a week after the day. I even think it might be, I don't know. I think you really need to evaluate the message. Right. And, and again, we're, we're, we find ourselves looking into the future and thinking, you know, how are we going to change? But reality is what do we have in front of us now that we can talk about? right? Mm -hmm. What's on the news that's real estate related? Are there myths that need to be debunked, right? Are there stuff, is there stuff that needs to be validated? And I think people more than ever want to hear the truth, right? So um, it's not going to give you all the content, you know, that you want for a week from that or for, you know, every day that you want to share something, but there are talking points that you can get. Um, I feel, you know, you can get deep on if you want to, for those that want to hear it. And, uh, there's a lot of confusion, you know, like one of the topics was that I, that I come up with often or I come across often is the mortgage deferral stuff. Right. And, and, you know, um, there's just a lot of questions. There's a lot of, a lot of um, misinformation that's out there. And um, the question, you know, that I want the answer to is what does it really cost? Right. That nobody's ever talking about. What does that really cost when you need to, you know, amortize six months of mortgage interest over, you know, the, the balance of your mortgage. And what is a solution to that? You know, and those are the conversations that I'm starting to have with myself. Like what, what are the questions and how deep can we get into the answer as opposed to just scratching the surface with it. Right. Um, again, like without throwing agents under the bus, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, you know, bank of Canada drops their, their, uh, great and you know now you're seeing 100 posts of agents talking about it being a great time to buy i think they're just tone deaf to reality and and uh you need to um, i think we need uh, we need to be clear about what we're talking about um, and there's a lot of opportunity in the news to be able to um, uh, clear the air as to what is being you know delivered to people
that's yeah. where I'm getting my information from or my topics of information from now. One thing that's tried and true and it applies to this current situation too is people need to get ready if they're going to sell. And they have so much time right now to get through those honeydew lists. They can't get their siding done and maybe their roof replaced or whatever. But boy, I've had some conversations with people who've been saying, well, I've got no excuse for not getting rid of this, for not tidying up this, for all this, all this other stuff that we're used to telling people about prepping for listing. We can't necessarily say when the right time is to, to list, but they need to be ready. And uh, that's where we can certainly encourage them. Uh, it's, it's tougher with buyers because some of them are champing at the bit waiting to kind of get at stuff and they want to know when the listings are coming out. But we can certainly help with the listings end of it, helping them to be ready when it's time to go so we can pull the trigger, get the photos and video in there, Matterport, whatever, um, ASAP, because that's what I think is going to happen. I know in my area, um, when the weather gets good, there's nothing that's going to keep people from going to their cottage. I mean, Doug Ford can lie in the middle of the 400. People will drive right over him to get to their cottage. So um, it's going to come no matter what's going on with COVID-19 after the May 2-4, especially if school doesn't go back in. People are coming. Uh, and, and the cottage market will, will at least creak back into life or slow, slowly the machine will start again. Uh, but having people ready, ready to deal with it, that's something that we can certainly be encouraging them for sure. So I don't know about the residential side, but on the commercial side, my messaging, at least for the past week, is pretty much the idea of when you need to get an idea of selling or, you know, whether it's your business or your property, then like talk to me. So it's really more for me just planting the seed so that when they need to, they're like, oh yeah, because I don't know, with commercial, right, it's less emotional, right? With that residential, obviously you're living in the house, you're like, well, you know, even though we can't really afford this, we're not just going to get up and go. But the commercial side, it might be more like, okay, our business isn't doing well and we might as well just like sell the place or get out of the lease and then now the, you know, their owner has to sell or whatever it is. So that, that's the messaging I'm using this from the commercial side. Yeah, just to add to that, um, like for, for Stuart, like in terms of content, um, even with what John mentioned that, you know, you don't want to kind of put them off with just real estate now with your message. It's more about just kind of keeping the active buyers and sellers in your database engaged and just kind of being top of mind. And some of the things that, you know, I've sent to my database is um, some things that will help a lot of them, like something like, you know, the emergency response benefit, how you can qualify. So just like a little article that I found and I kind of sent that off to my database. I've had replies from there. Oh, thank you. I didn't know I qualified for this. Right. So just kind of keeping people engaged and, Again, you know, like Lawrence mentioned, just like a stats, like analysis, that's what a lot of buyers and sellers that are currently on hold, that's kind of, I think that's the main thing they're kind of thinking about right now. That, hey, what's going, on in the, what's going on in the market? How are interest rates doing? You know, how is this particular area that we're interested to buy or sell? How is that area doing, right? So as, soon as, as long as you can kind of provide that without kind of coming off as salesy, I think it should be fine. Great. Um, Fred, any new uh, questions? Uh, I, I know we get, you had a hard stop at nine and we're past that. And, and my question I was... I already. I said I'm going <laughs> to My question was just uh, based on motivation. Is there anything different that any of you are doing to self-motivate now? Or are you uh, all just go, go, go the whole time? I'm, I'm trying to get into a group. Like the first couple of weeks, I thought were like a write-off for me. Like I really didn't get anything done as I've started to accept that, look, this is going to be like this for the next few months, right? So both in terms of expectations from each family member about how we should be moving forward, um, that those discussions were made and then we're just trying to move forward with that so that I have my time that I can actually work, spend time with the family. Um, in terms of motivation, that, that's just how I see it, I guess, just trying to build systems mostly. I mean, obviously I can't be going out showing houses, but that's where my mindset is at. I think John, your mention of the word uh, opportunity uh, before is is a key help for that. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, for me, I guess the definition of that opportunity is not business, but the opportunity to do other things uh, right now and see where you can help other people for sure. So uh, that is help. I will keep that word. I, I wrote it down on my pad, nice and big, underlined it four times. So uh, we'll be making more notes on that. That was Stewart's word. Right. Sorry, Stewart's word. Got it. 
Yeah, I think Stuart was uh, touching on that a little more. For me, um, you know, capitalizing on the opportunities that I never prioritized time for. Um, I got, you know, something that uh, has been kind of in my brain for the last couple of years that I finally started to take action on because now I got time to do it and the time couldn't be any better. Um, and I, uh, I'm not ready to share it yet, but it's, it's fun, right? And, and I think that um, it's going to, we'll, we'll discuss this afterwards and I'll share it with you guys. But um, I think that um, it's going to be part of my um, attraction marketing and um, and also my um, affiliate or referral partner marketing, right, is identifying who my tribe is, what is my message, and, and who do I relate to. You know, one of the one of the silver linings in all of this is you're starting to see uh, other agents' opinions online in a lot of the Facebook groups, and you're either in alignment with them or you're not. And I can tell you, like, there's probably 30 agents that I've unfollowed uh, or not unfollowed, but like taken a break from or made a mental note. Like, you know, that guy's a douchebag. I'm not going to be referring anything to him if my life depends on it. And now I'm starting to close that gap. So there's clarity that's coming out through, um, you know, people that are just bringing it forward. Right. And, and putting um, and I hate to be judgmental, but. I mean, if you're going to refer a client to somebody that's not in alignment with you, you're, you're, you're in trouble. Man. And people are just making it really easy to, um, to make you, you know, realize who they are. So. Great. Well, I think that's everything. So we'll just sign off with each individual person and then we will just stop recording and then chit chat afterwards if you guys like. Um, again, Lauren Smack from, uh, Lauren Park in Mississauga, done. Sorry, I got the sniffles. Um, nice chatting, guys. Dave. Thanks, guys. Dave from Muskoka, nice to chat. Mohammed. Mohammed Ashik from Brampton. It was nice talking to you guys. A good session. Should do this more often. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart. Stuart Sinclair from Remax Western Calden. Guys, this was absolutely amazing. I uh, appreciate everybody's input. And Fred. Uh, Fred from Milton. Thanks, guys. And Lawrence, thanks for putting this together. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, give me a second.